Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. We are going to finally set up this Canon TS8320 printer. It's an all-in-one. We have good plans for this. We have inks already have been developed. I got the refilling syringes, plugs. All I need to do is acquire a drill with which we're going to then drill these cartridges. These are the original setup cartridges. They're rather unusual. They are not at all like the Pro 100 CLI 42 cartridges. A little bit different design. And because they are setup cartridges, they come with a very limited amount of ink. And it's not like I can then come in and overfill them to a larger capacity. No, I cannot. I can only fill them at a little bit more capacity than the OEM amount they give you, which is very little. The sponge is saturated in a very, very small compartment. I can actually access that compartment by drilling a hole in a specified location. It's all right here in these instructions. And then proceed to fill them by weight. So I need to first establish, before we even begin to mess around with this, we're going to establish the full weight OEM setup cartridges. Now you could go ahead and buy the larger capacity cartridges, that'll set you back a few dollars, of course, as we all know, and then fill those, okay? But at this point, we figure, what the heck, let's just play around with the setup cartridges. Precision Colors has been doing this for a very long time. This is a printer that's been around for a while, but it's, again, a very good printer. It has blue ink, and if you watch my live stream this past Sunday, Mike Lee demonstrated what the purpose of that blue ink is and it may surprise you in fact it surprised me a lot it is not just to allow the printer to reproduce specific blue colors no it actually plays a very important step in making sure that your prints are neutral he actually took one of those cartridges and filled it with just clear ink base so we eliminated the blue and what he got was green yellowish results i mean vastly a, a huge amount of color cast and also a very large section of that black to white ramp practically missing okay so the blue comes into play for a lot more reasons than simply to allow you or this printer to reproduce certain blues which I think in the case of the Pro 1000, that blue comes into more specific, uh, shall we say, a play in the way that colors are reproduced. I did a demonstration of an image that had a gentleman with a shirt that was deep, deep blue. And it was a sunset, so it was very warm and lots of yellows and oranges and some deep blue water in that shirt. The P800 could not reproduce that shirt as accurately as the Pro 1000 did, and I just assume that is because of the blue ink. All right, so let's go ahead and begin to weigh these cartridges. Let me move this out of the way. And again, this is not going to be one of those super edited videos. This is going to take you step by step. I'm going to take you inside this printer as well. I got to read the instructions. How do I even get inside here? There is a million little tape tabs that you have to be very careful with you know to remove them otherwise you're going to end up with a problem so we're going to go ahead and cover this i'm going to bring the camera over so you can see the results of the weigh-in i'm not going to worry about weighing every single one they're all already pre-weigh them by the way they're all pretty much accurate to like point something of a gram so no problems there let's go ahead and start this up and we'll bring the camera over All right, so I hope you can see the indicator here. It's at 0, 0.00. We are going to place this cartridge. This is the black pigment cartridge, and it comes in at 37.14 grams. Now, that is with this wrapper still around it, so we assume that's maybe half a gram difference. I'm going to go ahead and weigh them again before I install them. So your regular ink cartridges come in at 22.83, 22.84, that's a hundredth of a gram right there. 
22.84. So that's a light, lighter in weight, 23.00. Twenty two point nine two. Okay, so there is a difference in their weights. I'm going to go ahead and go with the heavier weight, not that one. Twenty two point eight three. No, we had one that was twenty three, I believe, or maybe they were all. Yeah, they were all twenty two point eight three. Okay, so my bad. Let me double check that. 23 see this one's 23 grams just a few hundredths of a gram difference there you go 22.92 anyway so we're going to go with 23 because remember we are going to be able to fill these to a slightly larger volume okay so now we have established that we'll call it 23 grams because i have been told by mike that you can actually add more ink once you establish that drilled hole and there is a indication here in the instructions where to place that so basically if you orient this this way it's going to be located right on this corner right here of the qr code okay so we're going to do that a bit later not today um, one inch and seven eighths of an inch from the end right on that corner actually it can be anywhere across but he's going to locate them right there. That's what he's been doing. And so far, so good. All right. Let's go ahead and prepare to remove all of the tape tabs. That's going to take a bit of time, as there are a ton of them. Yes, this is my grandson's layout back here that he hasn't played with forever. And I was thinking about getting rid of it. But let's make sure that we have our printer plugged in. All right, so here we have our power cord. We'll unravel it, and I have an outlet back here that I am going to connect to. Hopefully, it'll reach. And one thing that's unusual about this model is that the print head comes pre-installed, so we don't have to worry about installing the print head correctly. We assume that it is done correctly at the factory. So let's proceed. Let's see how many tape tabs we can find. So we have a ton of them down here. And of course, that's one of the typical things about printers. Then I'm going to take you through an internal tour just, just to show you that this is not a printer that's built like a tank like the, uh, like the Pro 100 is. It's a lot more flimsy, but again, you're paying only $150 for this printer. So let's make sure that we have every bit of plastic. And again, be aware, there's a lot of this clear plastic, so, you know, it's easy to miss. And it's going to get stuck to my microphone. So let me look in the rear. I don't see anything back here. You got to make sure that you check everywhere because the problem will be that if you have any tape tabs left, you will get a jam. Simple as that. This has a disc printing utility also in tray, which is really awesome. And You can use the Canon, I believe you can use the Print Studio Pro application to print. So that'll be great. That'll be great for our photos. Let me double check everywhere. I don't see any more tabs. Nothing in the back. All right. So we are good to go. We also have a rear loader, which is awesome, by the way, because the front tray is mostly for your regular uh, copy paper or regular plain paper because it has to make that U-turn, which is a very sharp turn. 
and not something that you could probably do with thicker photo papers. All right, so I just got rid of all my tape trash. We're gonna go ahead and read here uh, our instructions. We should really do that. Never assume. So basically just walks you through the tape removal or the all of the protective plastic removal. Connect the power cord, we've already done that. And then we're gonna lift this up, we've already done that as well. Open the operation panel and press the on button. And we have power. And what we are going to do, we're gonna choose our language next. Let me make sure that I am showing you all of this. Remember, there are no cartridges installed yet. That's going to come next. And again, this is all real time, folks. So there's also a QR code here that you can actually scan and it'll walk you through as well. Now we're going to go ahead and wait. It's still doing its thing. Okay, so we have English already pre chosen for us. Sit. To English I think that's all we have to do yes and we have an online manual that we can access if you had this plugged in via Wi-Fi so now we're going to go ahead and open up the lid and according to this it's telling us to install the cartridges and all we have to do is actually remove that wrapper such as here and these are unusuals. They have a actual cap, just like the Pro 10 and the Pro 300 cartridges, the PGI 72s, as well as the um, PGI, whatever they are for the um, new Pro 300. Very difficult right here to peel off. Oh, there you go. And that does open a bit of a uh, so-called serpentine vent. We want to make sure that we're not blocking that at all. We want to make sure that it's completely removed, like so. You're going to have ink delivery problems if you do not do that. We'll take the rest of the wrapper off. And I'll go ahead and install one and then just go ahead and proceed fast speed with the others. It's been a long time since I played with one of these types of printers. So we lift up the lid and we wait for the carriage to come to the rest position. We're going to remove that orange clip and insert our cartridge. Do not throw these away because you're going, you're going to need them. I have almost two complete sets right now and I want you to see that sponge right there. You can see that. It's very similar to the um, Pro 10 cartridges, not quite exactly, but almost. And we're going to insert this in the large slot for the PGI black. The PG black, that is pigment black. Okay, this is going to be a little awkward because this is going to want to come down. I'm going to go ahead and undo all of these and then come back and install them all at once. Okay, we have cleared the vent. Again, remember folks, make sure you do that. You will end up with lots of ink delivery problems if you do not do so. A lot of the problems comes just from that alone. With the Pro 100, the same thing. The Pro 200, by the way, is going to be on pre-order from b and h as well as canon usa it is running for about i would say i think i saw 5.99 so 600 dollars for that puppy and so 
Again, if you're just starting out with a Canon printer, uh, that would be a perfect printer to buy at this point. It is really well made, just like its predecessor. Um, the only thing that I find unusual is that it includes many odd paper sizes as far as standard papers. So if you are a person who likes to do a lot of crafts, like scrapbooking, it has many of those strange uh, square sizes that are so popular with that group of people and that craft. So that, that's going to be a really good plus for anyone who wants to get into printing your own pages for all of your scrapbooking needs. All right. Got them all unwrapped. And again, you see this is real time. This is how long it will take you. Maybe even longer. Depends on your speed and skill level, I guess. Make sure that you insert each cartridge in the correct slot. I don't know whether you can see the carriage here. We're going to do the magenta. So we'll take this one, remove the clip. Now, you should weigh them with the clip on and no wrapper. And that should be probably a little bit lighter. So somewhere between 22 and 23 grams. Okay. I heard a beep. We got the yellow next. There you go. I assume that means it accepted it. Blue, photo blue. Next one. And again, don't forget to keep keep these clips, okay? Do not toss them. Now we're going to be examining other ways to refill these. I may be able to come up with a method similar to the uh, Pro 10, but maybe, maybe. It's just not a promise, just a maybe. Okay. Got a little bit of a droplet of uh, ink. I could see that that black, oh, that's cyan. The black ink reminded me of the other inks. Now we're going to go ahead and close the lid. Everything's installed. And the cover has been closed. Let's go ahead and close this as well. It's going to go through a charging process, I assume. I just heard something happening there. The following genuine Cano inks have, tanks have been installed. And it just walks you through. Everything is correct. These are 281, CLI 281s, and PGI 280, okay? That's your, your, for plain paper type printing, okay? Start alignment to improve print quality. Prepare two or more sheets of A4 or letter size plain paper. If you have no paper, you can perform this later. We're going to go ahead and grab some paper and re be right back. Okay, the instructions were not quite as clear as they should have been. There is another tray underneath the one that I was trying to um, pull out. And of course, that, that's only for your smaller size paper. So we're going to try to insert this. Again, it's very difficult to see when you're trying to do this. It's not the easiest in the world. Here we go. And we're going to insert that in. It should be able to recognize the fact that we have paper now. Let's see what happens. And okay, so it's out putting the exit tray out. And I hear that it is printing. Sometimes a lot is lost in the translation. Now, how many sheets can you actually load of regular common paper? All right, so we have, oh, it's going to do that on its own. I hope it is an auto alignment. All right, so tap OK, 
tap next follow the on-screen instructions to continue setup this includes making selections related to sending information to Canon well we are not hooked up to any kind of computer or Wi-Fi at this point so that's not gonna really matter much I hope you were able to see that let me make sure that the camera is oriented in the right direction yep very tight quarters here by the way as you can see but it's the best that i can do right now anyway what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing set up we're going to do a baseline test we're going to do some standard images of course and we'll do a couple of my own images and see how well this printer performs of course we will be printing on glossy i will do some text printing as well that will then trigger the use of the black pigment ink and we'll just check it out we'll test it to see later on i will mess around with the scan option the scanner option and see how that works ultimately what we want is a an affordable option for you guys who are interested in doing photos as well as regular type um, documents and that type of printing along with some scanning we'll test to see how good that thing actually is or if it does not perform i mean it's 150 dollars folks so you know what 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 more do you want actually it seems to be built pretty nicely uh, not as rugged as the pro 100 obviously but still pretty nice all right so it's performing all of the tests and again like i said it's going to be a good seven minutes so we'll just stand by and watch once we are done with this, we're going to proceed with the installation of the driver to the computer. And then we can go ahead and access. I'll do a screen capture of the driver's uh, features. And then we'll proceed to perform our first few test prints. Now, the tray that I just pulled out, I didn't know it was way at the bottom there apparently has uh, the ability to um, load many different sizes of paper again i really don't know how how thick of a photo stock can you actually load and we'll give it a try and see what happens then i'll figure out how to use the top feeder i think that'll be a choice that you pick in the driver itself for my photo printing i would probably want to use the top feeder it still says seven minutes but as we can see, it's doing its job. It's doing everything that it's supposed to be doing. All right, so now it says next. Now, Canon, we appreciate your cooperation in allowing your printer to send anonymous usage information to Canon. I don't know how it's going to do that. For using service related to Canon products to provide services related to printer and to develop and market products. Yeah, they want to know if we're going to refill this. <laughs> If you agree, yeah, we'll agree. Who cares? Ken is conducting a four-question survey concerning printer uses. Would you like to take part in this? No, not at this moment. Printer setup is complete. Now you are ready to copy. Yeah, let's make a copy. Let's copy this. Which is the top? I guess this is. Okay, let's go ahead and scan. Or do no, let's go let's go ahead and do a copy. Just a general copy. Um borderless copy, uh standard copy. Plain paper. Sure. Letter size, yep. Plain paper. All right, start. Uh, should we use color? I think it did have a little bit of color. Yeah. We'll see how well that works. So again, you know, my goal is to determine whether this printer will produce good photographs as well as everything else that's not bad at all and that was pretty high speed that was probably uh the lowest quality 
we'll compare it to the original gosh you know what that's not bad the text is nice and clean and sharp there's a shadow I got the light right behind the camera not a good idea there we go that's a little better all right so now we have determined that the copy function works pretty well let's proceed with um, the installation of the uh, driver and I think what I'm going to do well I was thinking about downloading directly from Canon USA the latest driver so as you can see everything is ready we're gonna be doing Wi-Fi later in fact let's see what happens I don't think that'll work why well, yeah it's not complete so we have to go ahead and do that as we install the driver let's see what all of these other ones are for connect to a computer via smartphone oh okay driver settings device settings feed settings maintenance cloud applications let's do an also check we'll see what kind of um, results we get now I would be very curious to see how much ink was used according to this not a lot all right so this is the nozzle check that it produces and very similar to other Canon printers and everything seems to be functioning perfectly all right let me go ahead and sign off for a bit I'm going to go ahead and get the driver set up and we'll proceed with actual photographs Got some instructions how to get the latest driver. All right, so let's go ahead and go and do that. Okay, so we have the site open for the download. Sorry, I cannot do a direct screen capture as I have everything set up for this weekend's live stream. And once I do that, I cannot use this camera on anything else. I was going to use OBS and do a screen capture setup. But basically, all you got to do is download the driver and begin the setup. Before you continue, the software may use the network to set up the printer. If your security software displays any alerts during the setup, allow the software to proceed. Refer to the security software manual for details. This software will add other software it installs to the list of allowed programs in Windows Firewall. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. It's going to go ahead and download the actual driver. Let me close this. And once it is done, then it'll ask us to plug in the printer to the computer's USB port. And that should then proceed with the actual installation or the binding to the printer. We should be able to access it on our devices and printers. So it has downloaded 9 out of 9. And we have no choice. We have to agree. Agree. And just let it do its thing. We got a new startup item here detected i'll accept that we're going to go ahead and use usb that's that's probably going to be the uh most reliable way to do this and later on i can go ahead and manually install it okay next so that is an 88 megabyte download and it looks like it's going to take approximately three minutes to complete this may actually come with a scanning utility as well we'll just have to see okay so now we have to connect our printer so we're going to go ahead and insert our usb to my computer you heard it it connected and i think that's about all we have to probably do everything else will just be fun you are now able to print from your computer and again we have another item found here now we'll go ahead and go into the control panel and search the actual driver just simply to see what uh, utilities it allows you to do within the driver how many options you can access in the driver um, again remember we have an lcd screen on the printer itself so we probably do not have to ever go in here 
and perform an alignment or perform a nozzle check or any such thing. We can probably do that directly from the driver itself. I'm not sure whether any of that will be available once we begin to disable link monitoring after each color goes empty. Remember, the only option is to install OEM, OEM, OEM. Now, I could buy for $30 a complete set of OEM cartridges. They're setup cartridges, but still relatively reasonable. And then I can go ahead and have several sets that are already preloaded. There's really no other option, but this little printer should be able to perform quite nicely. And if precision colors can do it, then by all means, I can do it. And probably a lot of you can do it as well. Later on, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. It says install the Canon Print Inkjet Selfie app to your smartphone. Scan for the QR code shown to the right, right here. And then we're going to go ahead and set it up for printing from your smartphone. That should be fun because again, remember this printer is not necessarily for your fine art type prints. It's just for you to be able to produce really, really good quality prints, but just basic prints, nothing to do with, you know, something that would hang in a uh, gallery. And this is taking forever, but we'll just go ahead and uh, wait it out. I suppose you can just go directly to Canon USA printer support and download the driver for the proper model printer directly. But this had me go through a specific URL from Canon and then it would show me almost a hundred different types of models of Canon printers. And then we chose the correct one. And then it downloaded the driver during the installation itself. So the, what was downloaded was not necessarily the driver. The driver is downloaded once you actually start the process of installation. Okay. I believe we are done. It's asking us to go online. I don't know why, getting the most out of your printer, the 8300 series. We're not going to delve with that too much. So let's go ahead and open up control panel, devices and printers. And there it is, the TS8300 series. So apparently it's the same driver for the 8300 series. So, so we have duplex printing, borderless printing, grayscale printing, in other words, black and white printing. And then we have the ability to print on standard photo printing, business document, paper, saving, whatever that means, envelope, and greeting cards. That's nice. Let's see what else we got here. The paper source, we have the cassette or the rear tray. We're going to pick the rear tray for now. I'm going to have this go to the highest. I'm going to go ahead and get us some, um, maybe some Pro Luster from Canon. And then we'll proceed to actually print something. View printer status. That's how much ink was used during the setup. So again, we don't have a lot of ink left. So we have to make sure that we print smartly. All right, we are now back. We're going to begin to print. And I just found out something. I had a set to standard. And that does not allow you to use color management. So if when you go to photo printing, then you can access this. What we normally access and we set it to ICM and now it will match whatever paper we load. In this case, I prepared four sheets of letter size Pro Luster paper. We're going to use high quality and this is it. We are ready. Let's put correct size there. Notice it will automatically default to four by six. We're going to use the rear tray and I believe that's going to be it. Photo paper, Pro Luster, ICM on the matching, color matching mode in high quality. Boom. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load our favorite evaluation image right there. And we'll proceed to print it. First of all, you need to check to make sure that this is actually green. Okay. And it just wants you to double check your settings. That's all. So that's Q image working for you. All right. So let's cross our fingers. We're going to hit print and proceed. I'll move the camera over to the printer so we can capture the print coming out. You see the paper advancing. After this, if we get a good result here, we're going to go ahead and load one of my personal images and we'll print that as well. 
I wish I had a large studio where I can perform this type of operations, but unfortunately I have a very crowded area to work in. And I can see the print emerging. And gosh, so far it's looking fantastic. Wow. Simple little printer can produce images like that. Mm. I'm looking for that neutral central image. That better be neutral. I'm also interested to see how those atogamma colors turn out. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Goodness. Let's see what kind of uh, results we get. I I can see number six. Again, I'm probably not using black point compensation. The strawberries are nice and red, not orange. Yeah. All right. Looks excellent. Skin tones look great. I don't see bluish shadow. Again, I call this a success. Let's go ahead and print another image. Okay, we're going to go ahead and print this image of a scene in Gettysburg, the battlefield that no longer exists. This tree, majestic tree, was cut down and now this is no longer the way you see it here. Anyway, very sad, but again, that's part of life, I guess. And we are done. We're going to go ahead and send this to the printer again using the same basic settings that we used earlier. Let printer manage color. Again, this is just what most people would use, and I want to keep it simple at this point. Print. We'll move the camera over. This image has a lot of subtle tones, and I want to make sure that it gets reproduced correctly. Keep in mind, we are viewing this under a very yellow light above me. It's a regular light bulb. And so, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see this relatively neutral. My light source is an LED. And again, it looks kind of uh, odd here. But again, take my word for it. It is actually neutral right there. And that's what counts. If it was not, then you would see problems. I'm also looking right here. There's a bit of a band right here. In other words, a little bit of a dark area in that cyan and the green band, the transition band but again that's something that happens normally very difficult to do it did a really good job on the blues here by the way all right so here comes the image now, i don't know whether you can actually lower this probably not we'll take a good look at this once it emerges here we go Oh yeah. See what I mean? It's very subtle. It was early morning. And it is really, really nice. I'm looking at blacks here. Very deep blacks. I actually see some detail here in the branches. Again, really nice. Pure black here in the cannon. And just overall gorgeous. Wow. I, I'm, I'm a little amazed at how well this performed. Um, later on, in the next video or so, I'm going to go ahead and start performing some scans. I will try to do a scan of it, maybe an old photograph that we can then use and restore on Photoshop. All right, that's awesome. I'm very impressed. I got to tell Mike Lee that uh, I had my doubts, but now I'm a believer. We'll have to see how this performs once we start to refill with those inks over there. And that'll be the kicker, because that's the ultimate goal here. We need to go ahead and refill with those inks. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This was not the greatest set of video in the world, again. But again, it was live. And you know me. I do things the real way and not fake. 
All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.